You can be seated today. What a blessing to get to be with you on Good Friday and get to worship with you on this day. Amen. And the significance of this day. I believe that uh, there's not, uh, there shouldn't be a Christian anywhere uh, that really should not honor this day because uh, for God so loved the world. Hallelujah. That he gave his only begotten son. And we know that on this day it signifies the time that uh, we really celebrate uh, the death. Uh, and I know you may say, Beth, how do you celebrate the death? Well, we celebrate the death because you and I know he didn't stay in the grave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But because of that death, it means that we don't have to die. Hallelujah. Isn't that the truth? But we can live in Jesus Christ. I'm so thankful for that. Well, I just counted an honor to get to be here with you. And Brother Adrian contacted me and uh, the ministry and uh, asking us to come. It's been quite a long time that it's been on the calendar, I believe, quite a long time. And then, of course, for Pastor allowing me to come in and uh, letting me be a part of what's happening here in Gastonia. Uh, we ride up and down this highway, this interstate, all the time. And uh, I, um, going through Gastonia, you know, you see uh, it's growing, what the Lord is doing here. Um, really what we see happening in the natural, but we're believing that in the spirit realm, that God is doing marvelous things in this Gastonia area. Amen. Uh, we hear a lot about Charlotte, hear a lot about this area uh, on the news everywhere I go. You know, we hear things about it. And I said, Lord, in my mind, you know, I think about it often, especially when I know, I know I'm going somewhere to preach. Now, I'll think about it. Sometimes it'll, it'll hit me when I hear the name or hear this area come up. I say, Lord, uh, move in a mighty way in this area. Pour out your spirit. Amen. We're hungry for you today. We are desperately hungry and thirsty for you. So I am just honored that you would let me be here on this occasion uh, on a special night like tonight. And I know we're coming up on Easter, no doubt. You all have a lot going on tomorrow. And so the fact that you would take a Friday night and to come and be with us in the house of the Lord, well, it just lets us know, and I believe more than us, it lets the Lord know just how, just how hungry we are for Him. Amen. Just how much we do truly love Him and, and are so thankful for what this day really signifies. I want to say just real quickly how good it is to have my husband with me, Kurt, uh, he travels with me quite a bit. Last year was a little bit of a different year for us. Uh, we had a lot of things going on. His mother went to heaven right before Thanksgiving. He was able to spend quite a bit of time with her uh, before she left this world. And, and um, I'm thankful for the time that he was able to spend with her. Uh, but I'm also very thankful to know that uh, she's running around on the streets of gold. Amen. And he's back on the road with me. I'm grateful for that. Uh, Kurt, why don't you just for a minute just come up and just greet the people if you would. Just take a moment to do that. Amen. Amen. Lord, I can't think of anywhere I'd rather be than in a house full of Christians worshiping the Lord on Good Friday. Amen. It's Good Friday. Amen. Because he is good. I'll tell you, it is a wonderful time just to think about. I was thinking about the scripture where he humbled himself and uh, becoming man. More than a man, a servant. Even obedient unto death. You know, yes. nobody took his life. He laid it down. Throughout ages, there's been kings and dictators and rulers that have required uh, you to, their, their people to give their lives for them. But we have a king that gave his life for us. Yes. Amen. Amen. I tell you what, I feel the Lord in here tonight. Amen. I tell you, we're excited and glad to be here, and we feel the Lord is moving. I, I tell you, what an exciting time to be alive. I tell you, if you're, what an exciting time to be alive and Christians. It is time for the church to be the church and be bold and bright and, and, and draw some lines. Amen. And I am excited about that and excited about what the Lord has for us tonight. And, uh, and I've already met, seen one lady here, and I know I've seen her somewhere before, and I think I'm seeing a few other faces that somewhere I've seen you, but it might be just because we got a like mind and a like spirit. Amen? Bless you. Good to be with y'all tonight. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Well, my mama told me before we got here, she said, don't let Kurt have the microphone. He might try to take over. I said, well, <laughs> she's teasing, of course, but um, I'm glad that he's able to be with us today. Open your Bibles, if you would, to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, a familiar scripture, uh, but I want to share with you just a little bit, uh, maybe a thought uh, you may have had before, but possibly uh, just something fresh and new that the Lord wants to uh, open your eyes up to, open your spirit up to, uh, believing the Lord to um, just to open our eyes uh, to something today. And maybe if you've already heard it, you already know, maybe you've thought about it before, but that the Lord would just stir our hearts. Amen. So Luke chapter 8, while you're turning there, I just want to take a moment today uh, to tell you we just, uh, we've just we been in revival in uh, close to Florence, South Carolina. Thus, the, my voice uh, sounds like this. It always sounds fairly raspy, uh, but today it's um, a little more than normal. Uh, but we have been uh, in a great revival this week, and we have seen uh, many people saved and set free. Uh, healed, and we've seen just some tremendous healings, and people filled with the Holy Ghost. It has just been uh, just a true move of God. I, I can say today, the reason we can say without a doubt it's been a true move of God is because we can't say, uh, no one can say, well, uh, Beth did this, or the pastor at that church did this, or the music did this, or somebody did this. or But because I believe that everybody came in with like-mindedness, and they began just to obey the Lord, God began to move in just a supernatural way. And I was thinking about it uh, today as we were on the way here. Um, I just said, Lord, I thank you that the revival... As far as the services that we were a part of, uh, that part of that revival is over. Uh, but thanks be to God that the Lord's not finished. Amen. And here we are in Gastonia tonight, and we know He's the same God. Amen. He's still a miracle-working God. He is the God that moves through impossible situations. Amen. And so I just want to take a moment today before I go into this text uh, and just tell you a few things that the Lord's been doing recently and there's a reason I'm doing it. I'm not just doing this randomly. So if you'll just let me take a minute to do that. We're in Harlan, Kentucky not too long ago. A lady come down to the altar. I believe she might have been a Catholic lady. And she came with some friends. And um, we had a, a joint service there with a lot of the churches in that area in the school auditorium. And the lady came down and she had pancreatic cancer and uh, tumors all over her body. And uh, really was, uh, I think I could say it like this, she was really a walking dead lady just about. Uh, when I uh, was praying with her, they started telling me some of the things that was going on with her. It was one thing after another, after another. A lady, a group of us ladies gathered around her and began to pray with her. And I'm telling you, I heard the Lord begin to speak. It was the most powerful thing. We began to lay hands on each part of her body that, uh, that had uh, sickness or disease in it. And uh, I got the, the notice uh, just the other day, I should have brought it up here and read it to you, that she went back to her doctor for a scan. She requested another scan, and they did it. And every tumor in her body had shrunk, some of them to over half the size that they previously were. And she said, I'm going to tell everybody that he is a miracle-working God. Amen. And he certainly is a miracle-working God. Uh, we had a lady the other night uh, that I know her quite well. She's been going through years of, um, of a terrible sickness. They can't really even put their finger on what it is. A young lady, a married woman with children, but nevertheless young. Amen. I'm trying, I'm thinking I'm young. <laughs> so uh, she's uh, younger than me, so she's pretty young. And, um, but anyway, she had been uh, feeling a little bit better for the last uh, several months, I would say. Uh, but all of a sudden, it came back with a vengeance. I'm telling you, God moved and that service touched her. The next day, uh, a friend of mine that um, is on staff at their church, she's the pastor's wife, said she went and got her uh, hair fixed. Of course, that doesn't take a lot. Us ladies, we'll go if we're on our last leg to get our hair fixed. Uh, she went and got her hair cut and all of that. She came home, cleaned her car all up. Uh, she 
she did, I, I forgot what else she was doing. They said she has not hardly even been able to get out of the bed. Got up, went to church that night. They said the Lord has touched her. She is a different woman. Amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. That's the truth. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. There was another um, woman. I, can, I, I know her very well. It's my mother. Uh, she wasn't even at the service, but she's been having terrible problems with her knees. Terrible problems. Arthritis, unable to sleep at night. Uh, just throbbing pain in her knees. And uh, we've, had, we've tried to do everything the doctor said to do, but nothing has been helping her. We come out of that service one particular night. Maybe it was Tuesday night. And, uh, and I called her. I said, Mom, maybe it was, might have been Monday night. I said, Mom, the Lord has spoke to me tonight. And uh, I began to tell her about that service and what the Lord did. And I said, and I believe the Lord is touching your knees right now. I'm telling you, she slept that night. She hadn't been able to sleep. I'm telling you, it's been months and months. She slept that night, had a great day the next day, slept the next night, had a great day the next day. I think it, maybe it's been three nights she slept just fine. She said, I've had no more of that throbbing in my knees. I said, to God be the glory. It's the Lord. Amen. Amen. Has very little to do with me except obedience. Has very little to do with Brother Adrian except obedience. It has very little to do with Kurt or anybody else here today. To God be the glory. Amen. If we'll just be obedient and do what the Lord is calling us to do, the Lord will move on our behalf. And this Good Friday that we're celebrating today, what this day stands for ought to give every one of us a reason to jump up and shout and and rejoice, amen, because on this day, the prison door opened, amen, on this day, people were set free, on this day, blinded eyes were opened, on this day, amen, I can tell you sick bodies were made whole, on this day, we declare that by his stripes, we are healed, and we're leaving changed, and we're leaving different, I want to say it again, not because of who I am, and not because of who you are, but because of the the Lord because of the cross because of the blood because of the stripes because of an empty tomb because today hallelujah what he did on Calvary he did it for you so that you can be changed and different and whole hallelujah today I declare that this is not just a Friday but it's a wonderful Friday hallelujah and we worship the Lord today amen our king of kings and our Lord of Lords somebody say to God be the glory to God be the glory hallelujah Woo! hallelujah praise the Lord to God be the glory you can be seated today I'm telling you though the Lord is moving the Lord is desiring to move for his people I believe that with all my heart Praise the Lord. And I'm one of his people. Amen. I'm one of his peeps. Thank the Lord. And I receive it today just like you do. So thank the Lord for this. Well, let's go right to the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Nothing like testifying. We're overcomers. By the blood of the Lamb. By the word of our testimony. The fact that we're willing to give up our life for the sake of the gospel. Amen. So let's go right here to the word. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 8, verse 41. Like I said, you'll recognize it. It says, And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had only one daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. And then you know if we kept reading, it would be about the woman with the issue of blood where he healed that lady there. But then go to verse 49 if you would. It says, While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead, trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only. And she shall be made whole. 
And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John, and the father and the mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her. But he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out. I love Jesus. Amen. And he put them all out. I love that. And he took her by the hand. And he called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again. And she arose straightway. And he commanded to give her meat. And her parents were astonished. But he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, if you would, today. I believe you're comfortable praying out loud with me. I'd love for you to do that. Let's lift our hands to heaven and believe God for the remaining part of this service. Come on, pray with me. Father, we thank you for what you've already started in this house. We thank you for your wonderful, precious spirit that we sense in such a mighty way here. Lord, I ask you just to move. I ask you to speak to hearts and lives. I ask you to flow through me, Lord. I declare it tonight. I can't do it on my own. I declare it. I need you, Lord. I need that strong, strong anointing. Lord, because we know it's the anointing that will destroy yokes and bondages. So give me a refreshing, Lord, of that anointing in my life, in my heart. Open up every ear here today to hear the words of the Lord. Open up everybody's eyes that we can see past the natural into the supernatural. And Father, for everything that's accomplished, we give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus' name mighty name we pray and everybody say amen amen Amen. praise the lord well let's just take a few moments if you're timing me i've only been testifying so far so that doesn't count so if you're timing me start now amen (laughs) but it's friday y'all don't have to work tomorrow so let's just see what the lord has for us tonight amen So I want us to look also at one other scripture here. And it's in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7. I'll read it to you. You'll recognize this scripture as well. 2 Timothy 4 and verse 7. It's where the apostle Paul was speaking. He said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course and I have kept the faith. And tonight that's what I want to preach about is keeping the faith. So when I look at Jairus here from the text that we read, we see that he had faith. We know that because he went to Jesus. He had faith, but the key is that he had to keep the faith. That's very important for us to understand here today. Because when I begin to think about having the faith but keeping the faith, it takes me over to the book of James chapter 1, uh, verses 6, 7, and 8. Because I find out if you don't keep the faith, uh, we're, we're called double-minded. And James says something about that. He teaches us. He says, but let him ask in faith. Faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. And so today, you and I must lay claim to the words of the Lord. And we know that God is not a man that he should lie. So what the word says, you can hold on to it. The Lord's just been putting this on my heart so strong. What the Lord says, you can build your house on. Amen. What the Lord says you can take it to the bank hallelujah if the Lord says it you can build your family on what the Lord says hallelujah so lay claim to the words of the Lord today and what I want us to understand here for just a moment is that in this faith walk that we're in we cannot be ignorant to the schemes of the devil I want you to understand what's going on with the enemy right here today the enemy has come out to destroy your faith he wants to destroy your faith in others he wants to destroy your faith in ministry, he wants to destroy your faith in the church and in church leaders, he even wants to destroy your faith in yourself but most of all today ultimately the 
the enemy wants to destroy your faith in the Lord. You say, why is that? Because the enemy knows, the devil knows that the Lord honors our faith. There is a war going on tonight and it is a war for your faith because the enemy knows without faith it's impossible to please the Lord. He wants to try to stop you. He wants to try to discourage you. He wants to try to pull you down. Why? Because miracles just don't happen. For miracles to happen somebody had to believe God. For miracles to happen somebody had to believe the word of the Lord. Over and over in the word of God we find that somebody had to take a step of faith to receive their miracle. Probably one of my favorite places and if I'm not careful I'll preach too much about it but but it's so powerful but let me touch on it at least for a moment. One of my favorite places in the Bible is where the woman had a lot of debt and she didn't know what to do. You remember the prophet showed up, goes into her house. He says well what do you need? She was a widow woman. What do you have in your house? She says all I have is a little bit of oil. He said that'll do the job. This is what I need you to do. He said, I want you to go and borrow empty vessels and borrow not a few. In other words, he said, get get as many as you can. Even if they're Tupperware, go get Home Depot buckets. I don't care if they're butter dishes. As big as you can get them, get them. Amen. I'm telling you, that woman had to leave that house and go and borrow empty vessels from her neighbors and from all around. There was an effort demanded on her part and I can tell you today the Lord wants us to believe enough that we're willing to step out in faith and say Lord whatever you want me to do I'll do it. Amen. Whatever you want I will do it. I even look at Jesus there in the New Testament and you remember that he spit on the ground and he put that mud on that man's eyes. You say why did that happen? I don't know but it worked. Amen. I don't know why Jesus did it like this. He said, now I've got this on your eyes. Go and wash. And you remember the man had to leave and do something by faith. And when he did it, you know what happened. Blinded eyes open. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you today. You say, well, I don't understand that. I don't either. But if God says to do it, I encourage you just do it. Just believe. Just operate today in that realm of faith through obedience. Amen. Woo. Praise the Lord. Now there's a lot of people today that will say, well, I I need a miracle, but if you'll just lay hands on me and anoint me with oil, I'd appreciate that. You know, that'll be good enough for me. But I can promise you the Lord most of the time is looking for you to step out of that place where you are and believe beyond belief. Amen. Where you have to step out in maybe unfamiliar territory and say, Lord, I've heard your voice and I'm going to do what you called me to do because I'm believing you for a miracle. Amen. So when I begin to think about faith today, I want to show you something because I think it's important. The title of this sermon is Keeping the Faith. So I think I can just say it plain and clear right here. It's one thing to have faith, but it is another thing to keep the faith. Amen. It's one thing to have faith. It's another thing to keep the faith. What do you mean? I believed yesterday, but I'm still believing God today. It didn't happen yesterday, but I'm still not giving up today. I'm still not going to doubt because it didn't happen yet like I thought it would. I'm holding on to my faith and to the Lord until this miracle manifests in my life. What I find today is there is a lot of individuals that have been right on the brink of a miracle. I've seen it over and over and over. Right on the brink of a miracle... And they missed their miracle simply because they lost faith in God and in the word of the Lord. You say, how could that happen? It's because the enemy is fighting so hard, like I said a moment ago, to steal your faith, to destroy your faith. I want to say it one more time. There is a war going on for your faith. And I can tell you today, the day that you give up on the word, the day that you wash your hands 
and throwing the towel on faith is the day that your miracle will begin to just float away from you. Whatever you do, I'm glad you've had the faith. But I want to encourage you to keep the faith. Amen. When I look at the enemy... And I see how the enemy works, and you know it as well as I do, but I want to remind you, when I see how the enemy works, I see just how afraid he is of people that have the faith and keep the faith. He'll try to scare you to death with physical circumstances. He, he will. He'll try to blow your mind. You may remember when Jesus begins to speak to the disciples and he says over in the book of Luke, I believe it was, he says, let us pass over to the other side. They get on the boat. He said, let's go over to the other side. Jesus goes to sleep on that boat, remember? And a storm blew up. I mean, it was an awful storm. Water begins to fill up that boat the disciples tried to start getting the water out trying to get all that water out of the boat they're in an absolute panic and they go down there like Jesus what in the world how are you asleep do you not even care that we're about to die anybody in here ever felt like that don't you see I'm about to go under don't you see I can't hardly make it another day don't you see how hard this is on me I'm telling you there's something that the disciples forgot. And this is what they forgot. They forgot that the word of the Lord had already come to them. And the word of the Lord was let us pass over to the other side. He didn't say I'm going to get you halfway over. And y'all are going to die out there. And you're going to, some of you are going to make it. Some of you won't. He didn't say that. He said let us pass over to the other side. And what I want you to see there is this. When when the Lord speaks it we said it a minute ago I'm going to say it again you can build your house on it you can take it to the bank amen when the Lord speaks the word the word itself will carry you over to the other side the enemy will try to scare you with the storm he'll try to scare you with water filling up your boat but don't you get your eyes on your circumstances instead keep your eyes on the Lord keep your eyes on the word of God and I don't care how bad it gets. The Lord can take a boat full of water. And he can get it all the way to the other side. He's a miraculous God. And with the Lord nothing is impossible. If he wanted to fly that boat to the other side full of water. That's how great our God is. Nothing's too big for our Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Whatever you do, keep the faith. I don't do this a whole lot, but I think it's important sometimes. Look at your neighbor and say it like you mean it. And don't mumble and don't blah, 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 blah. Say, keep the faith. Keep the faith. Amen. Keep the faith. What we have to understand today is that faith is not an option. A lot of believers today, they go, well, I'm going to try to have faith. No, faith is not an option. It is a necessity today. And this is what I found out. If you don't have faith, the enemy will destroy your life. You say, how do you know that, man? How, how do you feel like that? Where do you get that from in the Bible? If I don't have faith, the enemy will destroy me. Well, I want to take you over to Ephesians 6 and 16. I want to take, I'm going to get back to Jairus in just a minute. But in Ephesians 6 and 16, you remember the scripture? It's about the whole armor of God. But in verse 16 it says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. One of the reasons that so many people are weak and they're run over by the enemy is because they've not had the shield of faith up in their lives. And you can rest assured that the enemy is not going to fall down on his job. Even if you've got the shield of faith up or not, I can tell you what's hitting you. They're not just plain old little darts. They're not just a little push here and there from the enemy. But they are fiery darts that the enemy is shooting at you. And it is piercing people's minds. It is piercing their souls. It, those things are piercing. 
piercing people's hearts. That's why we see so many Christian people who cannot seem to walk in the victory, who cannot seem to come out of the valley. It's because our shield of faith has been down and the enemy is doing his job and he's attacking. But if you will walk in faith today, you've got that shield of faith up. I don't care how many fiery darts he sends. I don't care how many times he tries to take you down through faith in God. You will walk out with the victory. Amen. Amen. So it's imperative that you have faith in God. It's imperative that you and I believe in God. Anything, I know I've said it. But anything can happen if you'll start believing God. If you will start having faith and operating in the realm of faith. I want you to know something today. When you begin to think about faith and you go, well, you know, it's just kind of an option. I I know I feel like today I'm kind of repeating myself a little bit. But for some reason it just keeps coming back in my spirit. So I'll just, Jesus said, and again I say unto you. Amen. So and again I'm going to say it to you. But here's the deal. Without faith, you cannot please the Lord. And when you come to Him, you will be rewarded by Him if you do have faith. How many times have we seen in the Scripture, uh, I could think of some right now, in the Scripture where God, the, the, where Jesus went into a town, into a city, or among a group of people, and because there was no faith, He left. Now, I was going to be honest with you. I don't need the Lord leaving. Amen. I need the miracle. I want you to know that today. I'm not just preaching this for you, but I'm the one. I need a miracle in my life. Amen. I'm ready to see some breakthrough in my family today. I want to be full of faith. I want to be believing God and trusting in the Lord today. I want when the Lord looks at me for Him to be pleased. Amen. I want Him to be pleased with me, not because of all the right things I do or don't do or wear or don't wear or say or don't say, but because. I have faith in him Amen Amen Hallelujah So let me go back to our text now Hallelujah And I want to show you this Jairus He has a problem But we all know today that He came to God With a heart of faith He exercised his faith Because he says Lord If you will come and pray for her She will be healed There you go Faith in the Lord. How many of you know today the scripture faith comes by hearing? Now you may not realize this, but I've got some encouraging words for you. You have more faith right now than you did when I started this message, I don't know, 10 minutes ago. You've got more faith right now. You say, well, how do you know I've got more faith right now? Because I've not talked to you, but I know what the word of the Lord says. And the word of the Lord says that we have faith. Faith cometh by hearing the word of the Lord. Isn't that right? So you've been hearing the word of God. And as you've heard the word of God, your faith builds. Now if I could, I would get a hold of you with this oil. Me and Pastor and Brother Adrian and and Kurt would get a hold of you with this oil. If oil, anointing you with oil could give you faith. We'd get the whole Crisco bottle. Amen. We'd come down slathering it up and down. These, I'd slather some right on myself I would I wish anointing with oil could give somebody faith but the Bible doesn't say that's where faith comes from I can't lay hands on you and cause faith to come but what I do know is that faith comes by hearing the word of the Lord amen and I know I'm preaching to the choir right here tonight but if you don't mind I'm just going to go ahead and say it anyway I can tell you that is why it's so imperative for you and I to be in the house of the Lord. That's why it's so imperative for us to be a part of Bible study. That's why it's so imperative for us to come together. A lot of people say, well, that's just old timey. No, I want you to know it is the plan and the scheme of the enemy to keep you out of the house of God because when you're in the house of the Lord and the word is being preached and the anointing of God is flowing, the word will begin to penetrate your heart and guess what happens? Woo! Faith begins 
starts to grow. And what happens when faith grows? We please the Lord. And we see miracles. And we see signs. And we see wonders. And we see lives changed. Amen, somebody. Isn't that the truth? Hallelujah. I won't get real deep on here because real involved in this because y'all don't know me good enough and I don't want y'all to be mad on Friday night, on Good Friday. But I will never be convinced otherwise that that is why we have some church buildings today that only have their lights on on Sunday morning. I mean, my word, we used to say we don't have Sunday night service anymore. I know churches, right? I'm talking about Pentecostal churches today that will not have service any time of the week except Sunday morning. Hello, what in the world has happened? I'll tell you, the enemy has a plan and a scheme, and evidently it's working. And a lot of people are falling prey to this ridiculous mindset. I'm telling you today, we need to be in the house of the Lord. We need to be hearing the word of God. We need to be a part of small groups or whatever you do that you have a Bible study in. I don't know if you still have Sunday school or not, but it is imperative, amen, that we get the word of God in our hearts because hear this today. You can't, I know a lot of people say, well, I read the Bible. I want you to know today it can't just be a little scripture here and a little scripture there. It's got to be something where we begin to dig in and we begin to study and we begin to hunger after the word of the Lord then our faith begins to grow you say I wish pastor would leave me alone about reading my Bible the reason he doesn't is because he wants you to be able to live by faith operate by faith and stop walking by the flesh hallelujah Woo. everybody smile real big it just makes it a lot better, doesn't it? My pastor used to tell me where I was. I preached. I was on staff at a church as his associate pastor for a good number of years. And my pastor used to always tell me, he said, a spoonful of sugar always makes the medicine go down. So I try to smile anytime I'm preaching. Because I want you to know, I don't mean it mean or ugly. I just mean it, I just mean it as something that will encourage and help not you, but us. Amen. I, I need to hear it myself. Hallelujah. Well, let's keep on going. Hallelujah. So I begin to look today back to Jairus, and I want you to see something. I want you to see what happens. He comes to Jesus. I kind of shared that, but let me read that, that scripture in. Chapter 8 of Luke verse 41. And behold there came a man named Jairus. And he was a ruler of the synagogue. There's so much sermon material right here. But I'm trying to stick to it. But I do want you to notice. He was a ruler of the synagogue. He could have been killed. He was. Jesus was hated. But he made took the risk. Even as a ruler of the synagogue. He took the risk. And said, I don't care what people think about me. My daughter is dying. And I know the one who has the answer. Amen. My goodness. Somebody else will preach that part. But that's good, isn't it? And it says, he fell down at Jesus' feet. And he besought him that he would come into his house. Now, there's something that I want you to get real quickly tonight. Sometimes when we get to Jesus, we think everything Immediately, it's going to be all right. Hallelujah. But here's the deal. It's not always like that. I wish I could tell you that that is not so. That when you get to Jesus, everything's perfect. And you won't have no other issues. But here's the truth. It's not always, it doesn't always happen just like that. I don't always understand it. But I know it is the truth. So I look at him. This is important for you to hear this. Because the enemy may have been trying to discourage you with this very fact right here. He came to Jesus. And instead of the miracle happening right then and there. Someone comes flying up to him. And he says, listen, don't bother the master. She's dead. 
You'll see that in verse 49. Don't even worry about it anymore. Don't go any further. She's already dead. The messenger come. He said, trouble not the master. I want you to know something though, just as a side note real quickly. You are never a bother to the Lord. And I look at Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and 30, one of my favorites. And it says, come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden. And he said, and I will give you rest. Verse 30 says for my yoke is easy and my burden is light I don't care if you come every night to the altar come back again I don't care if you pray nest the Lord every day pray again there's something about being persistent I look at the woman with the unjust judge hallelujah and because she was persistent he finally says I've had enough I'm going to do what she's asking for how much more will our heavenly father move on our behalf when he sees a man or woman of God that says I will not be denied I need a breakthrough I need a miracle and if it didn't happen yesterday when I prayed I'm keeping the faith and I'm believing for it to happen today and if it doesn't happen today I'm keeping the faith because I'm believing it will happen tomorrow I will not give up amen somebody in here shout it out keep the faith keep the faith Woo! I'm telling you when I look at Jairus I look at a man that had to keep the faith I think about Joshua and Caleb they were two out of twelve the other ten had no faith but Joshua and Caleb said I believe God will do it amen I believe we can depend on the word of the Lord and we can take this land I don't know who you've been hanging out with I don't know who you've been listening to. I don't know who you've been taking advice from. But you need to make sure they are shouters and not doubters. If you've been hanging out with the doubters, it's time to change your phone book. It's time to delete some people off of Facebook and Instagram and whatever else you've got. It might be time to sit in a different place in the church. They might even have your last name. But don't you let the doubters cause you to give up on your miracle and let go of your faith. I don't care what they say. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Somebody comes running out just like the devil. Says, don't bother the master. She's dead. I mean, don't that sound just like the devil? I know it came in a human form. But sometimes it happens like that. (laughs) Amen. Isn't that the truth? But I ask you today, whose report are you believing? Are you believing the report of the Lord? Are you believing the report of the doubters? I want to give you a strong thought today. It is decision making time. It Right here, you've got the bad news. You've come to Jesus and it hasn't happened. It is decision making time. Because I see here from the example from the word of the Lord. That Jairus held on to faith. Even when the bad news come. Now I want to show you something. That I personally love. And it is in Luke chapter 8. And verse 50. I said it a minute ago. I just I love Jesus. I love him for a lot of reasons. But I love him in this story. Notice. The devil comes up. Now I know it's a human Well, let's just say what it is. It's the devil working through that human. That human comes up, don't bother the master. She's dead. I love the fact that Jairus might have went, opened his mouth to say something. And Jesus just goes, I got the answer. Amen. Jesus just steps in and he says, fear not. He looks at Jairus. He said, fear not. Believe only. and She shall be made whole. I'm telling you. There's so many times that the enemy will come after you, try to beat you down, try to tell you all kinds of stuff. And all he's trying to do is get you all riled up and bent out of shape and see if he can get your faith. That's what he's trying to do right here at Jairus. I love the fact that Jairus did not say one little word. He didn't even go, uh, nothing, nothing come out of his mouth. Jesus steps right up and he looks straight at the devil. He said, he turns around, he looks at the devil. He said, Jairus, he said, fear not. 
believe only and your daughter will be made whole amen I don't know who I'm talking to tonight but without a doubt the Lord is speaking to somebody in this place and he's saying fear not Keep the faith because fear will never see a miracle from the Lord. Keep the faith even when bad news comes. Keep the faith even when the enemy will try to throw you the worst one-two punch he can. Because if you let fear come in, fear will cancel out your faith. And fear will paralyze you. And you will not be able to move ahead in what God's wanting to do in your life. Fear not. So after the bad news, Jesus said, what and before? After the bad news, Jesus said, fear not. Why did he say that? Because... Jesus has already been moving on the scene. He was already on the way. He might not have gotten there yet, but he was on the way. And I'm reminded of that old song we used to sing sometimes that says, I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Hallelujah. I remember one great evangelist. You probably all know him. I remember when, when I was at the church there in Griffin, Georgia, and Perry Stone come to our church. He got to singing that song. So young, young people don't know the song but you need to know it amen I remember he said I got a feeling everything's gonna be all right oh you remember but then he says the word of God's done told me everything's gonna be all right oh the word of God has done told me everything's gonna be all right I'm telling you today I don't know what the doubters are saying I don't know what the devil is saying I don't what, know what kind of news you may have gotten but hold on keep the faith because the word of God has not told me everything is going to be alright hold on hold me believe don't give up now hallelujah somebody tell your neighbor again keep the faith keep the faith Woo! hallelujah <laughs> I will tell y'all, I don't know who Ric Flair is, but somebody said, you holler like Ric Flair. I said, all I know is it gets so big on the inside of me, I can't hardly take it. And about the only thing I can get out sometimes is a woo. Amen. Hallelujah. You say, Beth, I don't even know how to hardly keep the faith. When the bad news come, look to heaven and say, woo, I'm dependent on you, Lord. I'm trusting in you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just so y'all know, without these high heels on, I could preach all night right here. Amen. It is powerful. Somebody says, why do you wear those heels when you preach? I said, it is insurance that you get out on time, honey. Amen. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd be here all night. <laughs> The Lord gets to moving like this. I'm telling you that there's so much that comes up into your spirit. Woo! It's exciting, isn't it? Keep the faith, somebody. Keep the faith. I want you to know something now. This is important here. I'm just about to close, but not quite. So don't get on the keyboard or nothing yet. Give me another minute or two. But I want to show you something that's very important today. Sometimes... The Christian walk. Now this might be news to some of you. But I mean in all seriousness. And sincerity to you. And for us to understand and learn this. Sometimes the Christian walk is going to be hard. Sometimes it will take everything you've got. Just to keep on going. Say so what do you mean? People, thought that, people you thought were going to stand with you. Aren't standing with you anymore. People you thought were going to be right there to hold on with you aren't holding on anymore. You know what I'm talking about? I'm sure you do. All of a sudden they've changed your, their minds. All of a sudden it's like you're out there by yourself. All of a sudden you've hit this brick wall. And man to keep on going you think man where'd my friends go? Where did everybody go? Keep in mind it was somebody that had been in the house of Jairus. That came and told him don't worry the master anymore. Your daughter is dead. But I want to encourage you right here. Whatever you do don't get discouraged. When the doubters come just because you got a crowd 
don't mean you've got a good thing. Let the doubters go and begin to look around and get somebody who believes. Get somebody that has faith in God. Get somebody that says it might be rough, but we're going to keep on holding on. Amen. I would encourage you today to look at what Jairus did. Look at what Jesus did. And take example. It's going to get hard. Here's the news though. I know it's hard to believe. But he gets there to the house. And nobody's going, we're having a prayer meeting and believing God. We've anointed her with oil. We're believing. I know it looks bad, but come on. I know Jesus is on the way. We're going, no, they're whining and crying and mourning. And, oh, it's awful. It's bad. Oh. And then when Jesus steps in, he, he goes, look, y'all, just chill out. She's not dead. She's only asleep. Then uh, you find the Bible says, then they laughed him to scorn. Let me read you the word says, and when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in. Say, Peter, James, and John. We're going to touch on that in just a second. And the father and the mother of the maiden. And they all wept and bewailed her. But he said, weep not. She's not dead. She's just asleep. Amen. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. This is what you say to the doubters. Laugh if you want to. Scorn if you want to. But at the end of this thing, we're going to see who is enjoying the blessings of the Lord and the breakthroughs of the Lord. There is a time when we are having to draw the line. And let me be more specific than that. There's a time when Jesus is drawing the line between the believers and the unbelievers. Because you recognize it's right here when Jesus told them to get out. Amen. You say, what's going on? I'm not asking you today if you're a Christian. You can't believe how many people you'll meet on the street and they'll say, I'm a Christian. And I'm not talking about Christians right here. I want to ask you the question today. Are you a believer or are you an unbeliever? Amen. Are you a believer or are you an unbeliever? You say, what do you mean? Do you approach God with faith? Do you believe God will move on your behalf? Do you know that God will work a miracle for you? I want to know, are you a believer or are you an unbeliever? See, because the time comes when the Lord says, if you're not a believer, you've got to get out of the house. But if you're a believer, stay in in here amen and you can watch and be a part of the miracle working power of God hallelujah notice today that those that were believing who were they Peter James and John notice who stayed in the house Peter James and John and the mom and daddy of this girl those that believe they will not waver Those that believe will hold on to the word of the Lord even when bad news comes. Those that believe will endure hardship as a good soldier. Those that believe, amen, will press through, oh Lord, today for people, us, who are willing to press in in troubled times. Those that believe they will be the ones who have the miracle touch from heaven today. What about you? I want to ask you the question. I'm just about there, just about to close. But I want to ask you the question. Are you a believer? Do you truly believe today? Jesus begins to draw the line and he put them all out. He put the doubters out. Notice who participated. Only the believers. So I ask you the question. Do you believe? I'm not Jesus and I'm not going to stand in here and judge you and figure out do you or do you not. I'm not not going to get you to raise your hands. But I want to ask you a question. Do you believe that Jesus is the miracle worker that the word says he is? Do you believe today? Do you hear about a miracle or do you participate in the miracle? I want to give you one last thing. Obey the Lord if the Lord gives you that interpretation right now. Amen.
Place them inside of your heart yes. and come after me this night and yes. I will meet you here, saith the Lord of hosts. Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord a praise today. Hallelujah. Just thank Him for speaking to us like this tonight. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands for just a moment today and just give Him praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you for speaking to us tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I don't know who you are in this place, but the Lord is speaking to your heart. If you'll help me to close. I don't know who you are today, but the Lord is speaking to your heart. Here's the thing that I want you to see. When that daddy walked up into that house, it didn't get a lot easier. When they threw out the doubters, it didn't get a lot easier. Please, just stay focused for one minute because I want you to see something so very important. When he got there and the girl was laying on the bed, I want you to know what she must have looked like. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where someone you love, you've had to see their body laying on a stretcher. Or laying in a bed somewhere. We've experienced that in our family through tragedy of my niece. 18 years old. I remember seeing her lay on that lay on that gurney in that ER. I remember looking at her. And I can remember what it looked like to see no breath in that body. I remember what it felt like to touch her little arm. I remember the devastation it was to us and our family. Can you imagine what that daddy must have felt like? He walked in there. Jesus had already said, fear not. Only believe. Your daughter is not dead. She's only asleep. She will rise again. Fear not. Don't worry. Don't worry. But he gets there. He looks at her. No breath in the body. You're talking about one thing. It gets worse and worse and worse. No breath in the body. A little frail body. Can you imagine what it must have felt like? I wonder if he reached over and he touched her. But I don't know for sure. All I know is it looked like things got from worse to the very worst. Things got from, I don't, I mean it was already terrible and it got even worse. But what happened? Jairus had to make a decision. And his decision was, I'm going to keep believing. I've already had a word from the Lord and I'm going to keep believing. I already know what God is speaking and I'm not giving up now. I've already come too far. Jesus has already come to my house and I'm not going to stop now. I want you to know something today. Whatever you do, know this. That old song says, I've come too far to look back. My feet have walked through the valley. I've climbed mountains and crossed rivers and desert places I've known. But you can't quit now. I know it's been hot. I know it's been hard. I know it's been difficult. But we're nearing the home show. We're almost over. It's almost finished. Hold on. Amen. Hold on. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Don't throw in the towel now. Hold on. Hold on. God is moving on your behalf. Amen. God is moving on your behalf. Let's stand if you would. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep the faith. Somebody say it with me one more time. Keep the faith. That's right. Say it again. Keep the faith. I know you've had the faith. But what about today? What about when the bad news comes? And you go back believing for a miracle. And it hasn't manifested yet. And you get more bad news. And you go back again and you get more bad news. And you go back again and it looks worse than it ever has. Keep the faith. Amen. I want you to see that. When he left, she was just sick. She was dying, but she wasn't dead. He stopped. She's dead. Jesus says, don't worry. Whoever you are right here, things may look as bad as they've ever looked in your life. If you hold on to faith, God is moving on your behalf. Amen. Would you bow your heads for a moment and close your eyes? The most important miracle, you know it. But I want to be sure, just in case there's somebody here.
and may have never experienced the greatest miracle you'll ever experience in this life. And that is to be born again. To be born again. For just a moment, no one looking around. This is going to be just between me and this person and the Lord. If you say, Beth, I'm not saved. I've never given my heart to the Lord. But today I've come to this service on a good Friday. I know it's, it's Easter weekend. And maybe you promised a family member you'd come with them. But today the Lord has begun to deal with your heart. And you say, if that's the Jesus, if that's the Jesus that I've heard about on this cross, that you told this story about, if that Jesus would come to my house, I want that Jesus. I want you to know today He'll come to your house. He will go to your house today. I want to ask you, no one looking. If you say, Beth, I can't leave here like I've come. I can't go home. The same woman or man that I walked in these doors with, I want to be saved. I want to surrender. I'm ready to give my heart to Jesus. No one looking. Right now on the count of three, if that's you, I want you to slip your hand up. One, two, three. If that's you right now, if you say, Beth, I'm not where I need to be with the Lord. I'm not where I need to be with the Lord. I want to ask Jesus to be the Lord of my life. I don't see any hands. I'm going to give the second thing. You say, Beth, it's not that I don't know Him. It's not that I've not asked Him to be the Lord of my life. But the truth of the matter is I'm not living for Him. He's not the Lord of my life. I know who Jesus is. I've asked Him to be my Lord and my Savior. But the truth is I've begun to straddle the fence. I've been back and forth. I've been in and out and up and down. But today I want to recommit my heart to Him. I want to surrender fully and totally to Him. I love Jesus. I love the church. I love But I'm just telling you the truth. I'm not where I need to be with the Lord. And I need to recommit my heart to Him right now. If that's you, I want you to... That's right. I want you to raise your hand. That's right. Hallelujah. One's already coming to the altar. But right now, if that's you. Anybody else, you're welcome. Come. Anybody else, you want to raise your hand. You say, Beth, that's me. I'm not where I need to be with the Lord. Is there anybody else? Anybody else? You say, Beth, I'm not where I need to be with the Lord. I've been straddling the fence. I've been up and down. I've been in and out. My life's like a roller coaster. When I'm desperate, I'll call on the Lord. But when things are going good, I find myself kind of straying back. Anybody else right now? Do you want to raise your hand and say, it's me? I see your hand. Thank you. Anybody else right now? Then I want to ask you the last thing before I open these altars up to everybody. You say, Beth, I need a miracle in my life. I need a miracle in my marriage. I need a miracle in my physical body. I need a miracle in in, in my home with my children. Whatever it might be. You can say, I am in dire need of a miracle like this man. Like this man who was that leader in that city. I need a miracle. And I have come to this house. And my faith might have been a little weak. But through the word of the Lord, my faith has been lifted up. And I believe. Amen. I believe. If that's you and you say, I need a miracle. I don't care what kind it is. Maybe you've been overrun with depression. The Lord is here to set you free. Maybe that tormenting spirit has been keeping you up at night. The Lord is here to set you free. If you say, Beth, I've gotten bad news. The Lord is here with some good news for you today. If that's you and you need a touch from heaven, on the count of three, if you raise your hand for any of these things, these altars are open. On the count of three, would you come? One, two, three. Come on right now on this Good Friday. Let's come around these altars. I'm going to ask all of you altar workers to get ready. All of the leaders in this house, get ready. We're going to lay hands on them. Come on, that's right. If you want to stand, you can stand. If you want to kneel, you can kneel. The Lord is in this house. Amen. The Lord is in this house. That's right. Hallelujah. Come on, anybody else you want to come? Now's the time. The miracle worker is here. The miracle worker is here. Hallelujah. Else, I want to ask you, spirit filled men and women of God, spirit filled men and women of God, why don't you come in behind these people? We're gonna lay hands on them. We're believing the Lord today for miracles, signs, and wonders. Hallelujah! 
as Pastor comes, Brother Adrian, all the leaders in this church, we're going to begin to lay hands on you in faith. Come on right now. Lift your hands in faith, believing. Yes. Yes. I believe. I believe. this way. Let's begin to pray. Pray like this is your sister. Pray like this is your brother. Pray like this is your son or your daughter. Begin to intercede tonight. Let's believe. Let's believe.
church. Just keep pressing in. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Lift your hands this way. Keep the faith, somebody. Keep the faith. The Lord's moving. Hallelujah. The Lord is moving. Jesus, 
trust in God. Let the trust in God through it all. Through it all. I've learned, learned to depend upon His word. She said, y'all know that to be so? Y'all know it? Y'all have heard? You know about it? Keegan, are you hurting right now? No. Were you hurting when you walked in the church? Yes. But you're not hurting now? No. Your stomach? No. Your back? No. Y'all know why she still looks a little bit stressed and why she's not rejoicing like you are? It's because the devil's trying to fight her. Y'all know what that feels like. And he's trying to say, well, what if it comes back when you walk out of the door? That's why this sermon's about keeping the faith. Amen. Keegan, we're believing the Lord. Now I'm going to ask y'all's help. Because I can tell Keegan has a little bit of a a trouble with this. She wants to keep going back to what it used to be. And I get that too. She wants to talk about how it made her feel, what's happened with her job, and all those things because it's terrible. But how many of you know the Bible says forgetting those things which are behind? I press. I press ahead in Jesus' name. And today, I want you to hold Keegan accountable. Do I have that name right, Keegan? I want you to hold her accountable. And when she walks in this church, say, Keegan, you're a hill woman. And if she don't say, glory, hallelujah, that's exactly right, jerk her head up and say, glory, hallelujah, that's exactly right, Keegan, say it. Say it with me, Keegan. Say, by his stripes. By his stripes, I am. I am healed I am healed I want you to know tonight we're going to lay hands on her and I want you to agree with me today because we call what the Lord has done right here sealed with the shed blood of Jesus Christ we call this healing sealed with the shed blood of Jesus Christ that she will not go back that the Lord's restoring her mind that the Lord's restoring her heart in Jesus' name, and everything that the devil stole from her, that the Lord is turning it around. In the name of Jesus, I am healed. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody give the Lord a shout, a shout, a shout of praise. Woo! My goodness. Hallelujah. Keep praying. We're not quite through. It's Friday night. We still have time. 
Stretch your heads up this way. God's still moving in this altar. I just needed somebody to believe God with Keegan. And if any of you ladies want to come up beside her that's full of faith, I'd love for you to come on up here. Come on up here. Hallelujah. Come on up here. I'm going to keep on praying, but I want somebody to pray her all the way through. All the way through. To depend upon His Word. In Jesus, yes, I learned to trust in God through it all. Through it all, I learned to depend upon His word. It was through it all. Through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus, yes, I learned. The trust in God through it all, through it all, I learned to depend upon His word. Oh, take me back, take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received. back, dear Lord, where I first believed. Take me back, Lord. Take me back. Oh, take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, where I that's right, lift your hands up, church. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Father, in the name of Jesus, cover her head all the way to her. He's a chain breaker. We won't 
search for the light of day, the dead of night. But we've all found ourselves worn out in the same old fight. We've all run to things we know just ain't right. And there's a better life. And there's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, saving, he's a prison shaking savior. God change. He's a change.